Hey friends, it's Maddie. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be my October wrap up. Um, it's Sunday night, so November 1st, and I had like a really big writing project this weekend, so I just hadn't filmed my wrap up because I didn't want to film it on Halloween because I was still reading a book. I actually finished a book on Halloween. So yeah, I wanted to give myself the full time. My dog is right there. So he is licking his little paw paws. Uh, hopefully it's not too distracting and hopefully he stops doing it, but we'll see. I am gonna try something a little bit different this month. Um, oh yeah, I just got in the shower like not that long ago. It's like 1 a.m. But uh, I just got this weird like, oh, just stop. I just got this like weird inspiration that I want to film my wrap up right now and then hopefully have it up in the morning. I don't know, I'm crazy. Like, oh, I'm sorry, but this election is and I can't sleep, so here we are. Okay, so we wanted to do something a little bit different this month, and I'm going to present the books to you in the order of which I rank them from um, the worst all the way up to the best. Um, yeah, okay, so just to give you some stats about the books that I read this month, it looks like I read 12 books, only read 2,003 pages, but I listened to 52 hours. Um, so that's where the 12 books came from. Some of them were longer. My average reading was 3.71. It looks like I read one graphic novel, one historical fiction, which I'll get to why I categorized it as that, five horror books, two mystery books, and two science fiction books. Um, so five of the books I read were audio, seven were ebooks. I guess I didn't finish any physical books this month, which you'll see why I've been reading the same book all month and I haven't finished them. Um, and they were every single book I finished this month was an adult book, which is interesting because I usually have at least one YA or middle grade um, thrown in there, but th this month they were all adults. Um, another stat that I wanted to look at this month was where my books came from. Um, I read seven books that I purchased myself uh one book i got from kindle unlimited so it's kind of like you know owning it because i pay for the subscription one book was a gift and three books i checked out from my library let's talk about what uh star ratings i gave um just one second i'm trying this out so please bear with me i'm kind of figuring this out <laughs> um i had one dnf one two star, three three stars, two three and a half stars, three four stars, one four and a half star, and two five star books this month. So a pretty good month. I did have a DNF, which if you watch my thriller video, you know what the DNF is and we will talk about it. I'm using this fun wine glass. I don't know if you'll be able to read this. It says kindly go away. I'm reading see that? I love this. And the wine in it is delicious. So there you go. So the first book I'm going to talk about, so the book that I DNF'd this month, um, is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. And I'm very upset about this because I paid for this book. I mean, I got it for book of the month, so I think I only paid $10 for it because it was my first month. But I stopped reading this book loud car. I think I stopped reading at page 138 is where I stopped reading. Um, so like that much, 138 out of 344. And I stopped reading this for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, so this book is about a true crime podcaster who is investigating a story for the third season of her podcast and it is um she's going while the trial is going on it's a rape trial and at the same time she keeps getting left these mysterious notes uh by who a person who claims to be the sister of this girl who went missing and the reasons why i didn't like this book uh where to begin i i think that we are told at the beginning of this book that uh this true crime podcaster is like the best podcaster whoever podcasted like it is the great like she's essentially supposed to be like the sarah koenig of serial um in terms of how they say that uh the popularity of true crime podcasts went after this woman's podcast 
Um, but let's see, uh, the podcast chapters of this are awful. Like if this was an actual podcast, I wouldn't listen to it. I understand it's in a book and like you have to kind of like edit it down and stuff, but like the podcast chapter should be at least as long as the regular chapters, in my opinion, if you want to convince me that each podcast chapter is an episode because it's like a page and a half, which in the audiobook was only like 10 minutes and I would not listen to a 10 minute true crime podcast. That's the other thing. We are also told that she is just so smart and she has solved cases that the police couldn't solve on their own and she just like knew all of this um you know was able to crack the case and stuff and so you know that's a really intelligent person um that's a person who has their wits about them you know she's going and conducting interviews and stuff well she receives an anonymous letter telling her to go to the certain place and meet with this sister of um this previous murder victim. One thing I forgot to mention is nobody knows who this podcaster is. Like they're allegedly not supposed to know what her face looks like, which I find to be highly unbelievable in the digital age that literally no one would know what she looks like and how they're not having live podcast shows. Come on, that's how you grow your podcast. You have live shows. So anyway, she gets these notes from the sister of this murder victim and just automatically starts following what the notes say. Um, and if she's so smart, I feel like she wouldn't do that because couldn't anybody be leaving those notes? And she's just following them like i'm supposed to believe this is an intelligent protagonist but she's making simple mistakes like that it just i didn't buy it i do have this i personally don't recommend it but there are lots of people who are giving us rave reviews so uh yeah next i read off season by jack ketchum this was actually a reread for me and i read this for rachel from the shades of oranges book club on discord i am part of that and uh, yeah, I had already read this book before. I think I read it last year and I don't like this book. I think last time I read it, I gave it three stars. This time I gave it two stars. And I mean, where to begin? Okay, and I think next month or this month in, in November, I think I might be trying to do mid-month wrap-ups because honestly, sometimes at the time the end of the month uh, happens, the books that I didn't like, I don't remember what happened to them. Um, I gave a way better rant about the Night Swim in my thriller video because I had just finished it. And now at this point, like my brain is so fried, um, you know, from life and the world and school. One of the things that I really don't like about this book is how characters talk about women's bodies in it and like I know this book is from I think the 70s or the 80s but um women were still people in the 70s and 80s uh despite what some people thought so I would love it if it wasn't always about what women looked like in this book this book you're following this group of people who are meeting at this cabin for this like weekend retreat type situation and uh then suddenly they get attacked and these people start um you know, attacking them and it turns out that the people are cannibals, um, which sounds like really fun, but it, it's not. Uh, the first part was boring. The second part was disgusting um, because it's literally like a lot of people having sex or talking about women's bodies, but it's not like anything that is furthering the plot. Like none of the sex in this book furthers the plot. Like in a romance, I'm okay with sex because like it's part of the relationship. It's part of building and growing the relationships. And there are other books that have sex that further certain characters' relationships with each other, but that is not the purpose of it in this book. It is literally just to have sex. In the end, I didn't really like this book very much. I thought it was kind of disgusting and demeaning towards women's bodies, and I'm really just, I don't know. I don't know. I've only read this one Jack Ketchum book twice, and I didn't really like it either time, so I think I might try out one more of his, but if I don't like that, I'm not gonna read it anymore because I just don't have time for um, discussing women's bodies in this way. I don't, I don't have time for it. Um, let's see, okay, getting into three-star territory, uh, I read Poirot Investigates by Agatha Christie, and I just realized I left it downstairs, so here's a picture of it. It looks like this, beautiful. Um, this was a collection of Poirot, like, short, uh, little mysteries, and I can't say that I'm a fan of, uh, the short story version of Poirot. Um, I think he's a little bit meaner in the short stories, or um, maybe it's the time this was written. But I also just, I don't know. I never felt like there was enough for me to figure out who it was. And then I would go listen to like a podcast or watch someone else's review of it and they made it sound super simple. So maybe I'm just not good at solving mysteries. I don't know, but this one just wasn't really for me. I think I prefer Poirot in long form. 
Next, I read The Dead Zone by Stephen King. I actually did listen to this as an audiobook on Scribd, but uh, I do on this copy, so I'm holding it up. Uh, I enjoyed this book. I thought it was fun. Um, it's a little... Well, it's, I think it's unnecessarily long, and I think that... Oh my gosh, I forgot to say what this book is about. This is about a man named Johnny. Um, is that his name, Johnny? Yeah. This is about a man named Johnny Smith who has this ability to see things that are going to happen. And then he gets in this car accident and is in a coma for like four and a half years. And when he wakes up, he is able to see futures of people when he touches them. And so a lot of the book is about him discovering his... Uh, powers and stuff within you know like the touching and stuff so I think that I would guess like the second part yeah so we don't really get our antagonist until like the very end of this book like I would say 75% of this book is set up for the story about Johnny Smith and we get like these weird little snippets about our villain um his name is like Greg or something yeah, Greg Stilson. Um, we get these little snippets about him, but they don't really mean anything or make any sense. Um, so then once I discovered who he was, I like went back and figured it out. But I was really confused. I thought the guy was like the sheriff of this town and it was confusing to me. Maybe it's because I listened to it as an audiobook, but I don't know. Anyway, I gave this one three stars. Uh, not my favorite kink, but not my least favorite either. So it's all right. Then I read Caught Bread Handed by Ellie Alexander. This is book number something. Uh, book number four in the Big Shot Mystery Series. This is a cozy mystery series. You're following Jules, who uh, works at this bake shop called Tort that her mother owns. And of course, all these people end up getting murdered around her because this is what happens in Cozy Mysteries. I really like this series. Uh, this was not my favorite, though. This book was way more about Carlos and Jules's relationship than it was about um, the murder or the victim or anything like it that felt like such a secondary story to uh carlos and jules's relationship so this one just like wasn't my favorite it's just getting into 3.5 stars i read mexican gothic by sylvia moreno garcia and uh this book you're following this woman named noemi who gets a letter from her sister Catalina, who has just been married. And she says like, I need you, I need your help, something is wrong, and like sends her this letter. And she goes to this like creepy English manor in Mexico that Catalina lives at with her husband and weird stuff is happening and she's really confused. Um, this book, this is the one that I uh, categorize under historical fiction rather than horror because I didn't necessarily, I mean, it was creep. Well, I could see why it's horror too. Yeah, I have such a hard time categorizing books. Oh my gosh. But I think this one's more historical than horror just because uh, it seemed to be more about the love story than it did about what was going on. And that was very much like end of the book type of stuff. There wasn't a ton about it um, in the rest of the book, but it was interesting and creepy. Um, yeah, it just like wasn't my favorite. I don't know how to, yeah, this book just, I think this book would have worked a lot better as a short story than as long fiction. Um, I just think the beginning, the front half or the front 60% was way too much like exposition type stuff and it didn't have enough meat to it. Um, then I read Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. This is a collection of stories that all take place in, around, or about Autumn Crow. Um, this town and it you know is kind of like oh god a town that I would love to live in where it's you know it's beautiful in autumn and Halloween and wonderful all the time right not wonderful necessarily but wonderful to me uh, and yeah I gave this three and a half star I really liked the atmosphere of this novel I thought that it gave um perfect autumn October vibes like this is the perfect book to read in October some of the stories I just didn't like as much as the other ones, uh, which I generally find to be the case in short story collections. So it's kind of how it goes, even um, by the same author. Sometimes like I don't like all the stories, like the same thing happened when I read Full Throttle by Joe Hill. Like I just didn't like every one. I don't necessarily get along with every story, but I definitely think it's worth checking out. It's a good collection 
perfect for October, but really you could read it any time of the month because who doesn't want to feel autumn vibes all year round? I do. Next, I read a book that I am really excited to talk about. It is called Local Haunts, um, and it is a collection of short stories. Uh, it's a horror horror tube anthology. Um, so it's a collection of short stories by people who all have uh, YouTube channels, like BookTube and AuthorTube channels, which I thought was really cool. Um, I found about, out about this book from Jason, from Jason's Weird Reads. He talked about it on his channel because he has a story in here, which we will talk about in a minute. But I thought this whole collection was like really good. There was a ton of like creature type horror in this, which I is like one of my favorite types of horror. So that really appealed to me a lot. So stories that were highlights for me was Craw uh, Crowthorn by Andrew Lyle, Mount Gilead by R. St. Clair, who is actually the editor of this collection. Um, the vibes of that one was so like October Ray Bradbury vibes, but girls, which we need more of. I need more girl coming of age stories, please. The Room Within by D.L. Tillery. Uh, this is a vampire book, a vampire short story, which I loved. Uh, vampires, I'm such a sucker for that, which, you know, creatures, makes sense. Uh, and then um, Darkness Ascends by Jason White. Uh, this was like ancient creature feature, which like I needed it. I needed like a hundred thousand more pages of this. Like I just wanted to read the whole thing. It, like I, I was really nervous to read this story. I have to say, uh, as someone who has like talked to Jason, um, you know, in like Discord and stuff, I was like wary to read a story by somebody that I knew because you just never know if you're gonna get along with someone else's writing style. And I was so happy. I read like a page of it. And I had to hold my sister that I was really concerned about liking this story because you know, you wanna make a good impression. And I don't wanna like shit on somebody else's story on the internet that I'm kind of friends with. Yeah, I just loved that story. And then um, At the End of the Rope by Cameron Chaney, um, which does have a child abuse aspect in it, just so you know. Um, but yeah, I loved it. It was like the perfect amount of spooky. It had Autumn Crow callbacks, like, I was feeling it and I don't know if it's because I read Autumn Crow this month so I was like already on the Cameron Chaney train but yeah this collection is really good I think it's 99 cents on Amazon right now ebook well well worth the price I think I paid like three bucks for it or something like that but yeah well worth the price really enjoyed it I am seeking out stories or um longer fiction whatever I can find by some of these authors because wow very good um, and I'm someone who I think I'm hard to please in short story collections. Uh, that's just my opinion of myself. Getting into four star territory, I read Lock and Key Volume 2 by Joe Hill. And it's called Head Games is um, the name of this volume. And yeah, I really liked it. Four stars. I don't think it was as good as uh, Welcome to Lovecraft. Um, it might be because I read them like further apart. So maybe I just forgot stuff, but I don't think... I think it just wasn't as strong of a story. Uh, I didn't like the key as much as the keys that were used in um, the first one. So uh, another four star book is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I read this for a class actually, but um, I've been wanting to read this book. So I'm kind of like I'm talking about it on my channel and counting it because I'm really interested in it. I actually listened to the audiobook of this um, from Audible. It's like Tim Curry and Alan Cumming. Simon Vance is on it. Just narrators are so good and I definitely recommend that experience. It was wonderful, especially since this is epistolary and the letters can get so long that sometimes I forget who's talking. Um, it was a lot easier to follow on audio because it's a full cast. So every character had their own narrator, which I really, really loved. Um, Dracula, it's a quintessential vampire story. Jonathan Harker goes to Transylvania to help this count Dracula. Um, prepare to move to England and when he's there he discovers that Count Dracula is not who he thought he was or what he thought he was and yeah we're following um, other characters as well uh, you know Jonathan's future wife and her friend and a doctor and there's a lot of moving parts in this book but I definitely think it is worth a read at least once I loved loved this book I had such a good time I just think some parts were slow um, 
and I just wish there was more Dracula in this. Like, I want more vampires. If you, what, recommend me your favorite vampire books down below, seriously. Like, if you have a favorite vampire book, please tell me what it is. Um, I've read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Va Slaying Vampires. I've read Salem's Lot. Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But if you like vampires, please tell me what your favorite vampire book is. Okay, and then the only four and a half star book I read was Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This book is horror and it is about, um, it basically takes place in a world where some members of the KKK called Ku Kluxes are monsters. Um, and we don't know what, like where they came from or anything like that, but these three women that we're following um, are deep, essentially monster hunters. They kill Ku Kluxes and try to prevent them from turning regular humans into Ku Kluxes. But um, they're also trying to fight the clan. You know, they're trying to fight for their rights. Oh, the three women are black women. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear, but they're three black women in like the twenties fighting um, Ku Kluxes. And there's a re-release of Birth of a Nation happening. And Birth of a Nation is how a lot of Ku Kluxes were, how a lot of Klansmen were turned into Ku Kluxes. So yeah, this book, I would recommend the audiobook for this because there are certain um, characters who speak dialectically. There are people who speak with accents um, and uh, the writer, uh, P. Jelly Clark, he writes how they would speak. And so I found it hard to read sometimes, but I thought the audiobook was like perfect. It literally had me gripped. I was laying in my bed listening to it like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? Uh, yeah, I didn't give this five stars because I needed more from it. I felt like it wrapped up just a little bit too quickly. I wanted this to be like a hundred pages longer, but oh my God, this book is amazing. Like seriously, go out and get it. I want to tell everybody I know about this book. Like I literally won't shut up about it. So please go and read it. Honestly, I should read this. I'm going to give this five stars, uh, genuinely because... I, I can't stop talking about it. I can't stop thinking about it. Like I'm just gonna quick switch that to five stars because I think it uh, I think it it deserves it. Yeah, five stars. So getting into the five star books, my two favorite books of this month. Um, the first one is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I did not expect to like this book this much. I don't even remember why I checked it out. I think it might have been available at my library or something. I don't know. I literally read this book in like two sittings. Um, you're following this woman, Eleanor Oliphant, and she's kind of a mess. Like her life is not put together. She has drinking problems. She is awkward in social situations. And it's really like a story with so much heart. Like I did not expect to fall in love with Eleanor and I cried during this book. I just, I connected to her in, in, in such an important way for me. And honestly, like, I don't know, I was feeling bad. And I think reading sometimes about people who are going through similar things or even going through a rough time, maybe it's not the same thing, can be very helpful. Um, sometimes in healing your own wounds and I really um I really admired um this book yeah and then my favorite book I read this month oh my god it took me like almost all month to read but that's just because it was so long um and I wasn't into it right away but um this is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and oh my gosh I love this book so much I <sighs> this book is like the wayfarers are like my family now everyone on the wayfair is my family and i love them so so much and uh, even characters that i didn't really care about i felt like i just connected to them in an in interest i don't know there's just so much to this you're can i even say what this book is about i just love it so much um you're following a crew on this ship called the wayfarer and you get all these different perspectives. Some of the crew are not human. It's a you know, like mixed race crew, mixed alien race crew, I guess you could say. Um, and um, there's LGBT representation, there's minority representation um, that aren't aliens, like human minority representation. Um, and it just, 
I feel like it touched my soul and it didn't want to let go and I just I feel like I could read this book over and over again and get something different from it every single time and uh, that's what I loved so much about this book. And then I'm going to talk about real quick just the two books that I'm in the middle of reading. One of them <laughs> may look familiar. It is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I am in no way not enjoying this book. I am... Um, 205 pages into it. I am loving this book. Um, it just, I keep leaving it downstairs and then I'm upstairs and I want to read and then it's not down here or vice versa. And oh God, if I had an e-copy of this, I would have finished it already. That's one thing I'm noticing is like, I'm a lot better at reading e-books than I am at reading physical books, which is very interesting. Um, because really before this year, I didn't read very many e-books. But now that I have um, my iPad, I definitely read a lot more ebooks and on my phone too. Um, so yeah, I'm really loving this though. No complaints. Very intriguing. Finding out more about Resand. Very excited to continue. And then I know the next one's even longer than this, which oh my gosh. And then the book that I just started last night. Um, early this morning, however you want to put it, is The Half That Has Never Been Told, Slavery and the Making of American Capitalism by Edward Baptist. This is a book that I'm reading for Nonfiction November. I talked about it in my Nonfiction November TBR. I'm probably reading this for the time prompt because it's historical. This book is basically telling um, the history of slavery in America through the lens of Black Americans. Um, you know, slaves and then freed peoples and just various different perspectives. I've only read 37 pages of it, but I've already learned like things that I had never known. And I just think it goes to show that the schooling that we're getting in America is not great. Like I don't know these things and that's a problem to me. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna work my way through this this month. I'm very excited about it. I totally almost forgot to close out this video because I'm a mess. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this wasn't too chaotic for you. My brain, what is it? But yeah, comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and vampire book recommendations, please, that actually have like lots of vampire in them rather than Dracula and Salem's Lot, which have like hardly any. I need more vampire action. Um, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you had a good time. I know I did. Uh, and then, yeah, oh yeah, subscribe. Please subscribe if uh, you would like to hear more from me. And um, yeah, that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.